Tinubu must go. End bad governance. These hashtags have been trending these past weeks, leading up to the planned protest by Nigerians come 1st of August to run through till the 10th of August. What do we know about this protest? What do we need to know about this protest? So um, thank you, Mr. Director. This is um, a flyer that I came across, on, I think, on the 7th of this month. And um, it brought to my knowledge a planned protest. It says, end bad government in Nigeria 2024 is a nationwide protest. Now, first things I noticed about this flyer is typographical errors, which questions the integrity of where this flyer is coming from. And um, I'm seeing Sorosoke part two. This is another sort of NSAS pr protest being planned to run for 10 days, right? So here's my take on this. Is there room for dialogue? Because that was one of the things that the NSAS protest lacked. When the government was trying to have a dialogue with the protesters, the protesters came out and said they had no leadership. So who is the government going to dialogue with? And then is this just a hoax? Because I could sit down and um, come up with that flyer and post it and it makes sense to a lot of people. And it just keeps trending and all of that. So, And then most importantly, what's the end game? We've delisted out a couple of things that I asked myself, are these things realistic? Are they attainable? And we want to stand and protest for 10 days nationwide. We want to see all of these things change. We want to see these reforms in 10 days. This leads to a lot of questions. And um, I'm going to be introducing to you my guest right after the break. But before we go on, remember, my name is Chinon Sochekwes, and we'll go right into the conversation on the planned protest in Nigeria come 1st of August through to the 10th of August, right after the break. So stay tuned. Welcome back, Mr. Ejiro Unuata. A popular face on the show is my guest today. He's a public affairs analyst. And of course, he is a lecturer also at the City Polytechnic in Abuja. Thank you so much for coming on the show this today. Thank you very <laughs> it's much. It's good to have you at such a time. There's so much happening in the nation. The country has been dramatic to a point. But um, today, I just want us to talk about the planned protest, right? We're all aware of this. It's been making the rounds, governments are meeting, and all of those things are happening. But first of all, let me ask you, are you a supporter of this protest? Well, uh, <laughs> that would be putting me on the spot, actually. <laughs> I, uh, protest is everybody's right. Yeah. And, uh, so I don't see anything wrong with anybody going out to protest. Probably we'll just be on the, the background and see how it goes. Because uh, why I can't really come out publicly to say I'm going to be marching out there because I don't really see the objectives. Mm. I want to know what are the objectives spelled out for this protest to achieve. Because a lot of persons are saying that, oh, this is coming in the fashion of that of Kenya. But yeah. that of Kenya, they, they came out with a, a well-planned objective. These are the things we want. We don't want, uh, we want the, the, the tax. Uh, mm. So in this particular situation, they are not telling us what they, they want said to Tinubu must go. Tinubu must go. I don't think that that's a tall order to achieve. Yeah. Okay, so you, he's democratically elected, so you can't just come and say he must go. I mean, they, they, there should be room for dialogue. You understand? So if you're saying Tinubu must go, I don't see that happening. You said bad governance has to end. How? How, How? do you end bad <laughs> governance? If the presidency come out to say, okay, Okay, we've heard you. We are going to add bad, uh, bad governance. How? How are we ending bad so governance? So if, if they are saying, okay, uh, the, the electricity tariff revert back to the old order, mm. uh, the, the fuel pump price revert back to the old order, and all that, then we can understand you. Okay? We want to be part of this. But 
in a situation where there is not properly spelled out like what you just showed now so much graphical errors and yeah so that could make you really wonder who are the faces behind, behind the protest this. That's another thing. We don't even know the faces behind the protest. And they've told people to go to um, go to your senators' um, offices in Abuja, as, uh, go to the National Assembly. As the person spelled it there, go to the National Assembly. And so we, we actually may not have anywhere to go to here in Abuja. Like I said, do you have any suspicions of the organizers of this? Because the government has come to blame the opposition and not just... We're not blaming the two oppositions right now. They have um, put it on the necks of particularly Peter Obi and his supporters. Well, uh, Bayo Ananuga said that uh, Peter Obi and his supporters, it's quite unfortunate that we have such a person occupying such sensitive position, uh, bringing out such kind of information, mm -hmm. because that will be setting a particular region against the other regions, because we know... It will be his strong political base. He's from the East. And he probably, yes, he has supporters all over Nigeria. Yeah. But we know as an Eastern number. But for him to say, Peter will be, why not Atiku Abubakar? Exactly. All right. So why you just single out Peter will be? Why, why? It seems more like hate. Yeah, because all we right? have two oppositions. Yeah, so, so I, I don't I don't think by uh, Onanuga should really occupy that particular He's position. been making a lot of statements that makes us wonder. It doesn't really add up. It doesn't mm. really add up. It's quite unfortunate because when you make this kind of statement, you're just pinching one tent against the other, yeah. saying that, oh, is he opposition? Yes, even the minister of FCT came out to say he's the opposition. But he didn't quite, uh, I, didn't, I don't really think he called any name, but yes, let's look at the protest critically. Is it right to, to, to have a protest? Yes, mm -hmm. you can have a protest, right? Mm -hmm. When you are grieved. Is the economy okay for Nigerians? No. no. So they have every right to go out and protest. So if you're saying Peter Obi, for me, I think Peter Obi should take it the right way because it's just making Peter Obi very popular. What's the right way he should take it? He should leverage on this. He right? should just leverage on it. <laughs> yes, he should come out with his full chest and say, guys, I support the protest because he has not said so. Yeah, he hasn't said so. But Atiku Abubakar came out. that doesn't damage to his political career? Oh, no. Wait, what are people protesting for? If you say the economy is bad, is it bad? So, he can come out to say, this economy is not working, I'm supporting the person. See, in other clients, like in, in Kenya and the rest, the mm. opposition organized protests. Even in Ghana, the opposition organized protests. So, there's nothing wrong with opposition organizing like protests. Protest. Because if a particular government is not doing well, opposition, they are there to checkmate the government. Okay, so it's By allowed means... to organize protests. Mm. All right? That of Kenya, we saw at the end of the day what Rutu did. He sacked his ministers. He has been doing. Now, he has been doing, yes, because yeah. he continues to so, so he keeps. Now, what he did was to give some section of his uh, office to, to the opposition. Mm. That's what he did some few days he ago. Did school, yes. So, you see, he tells you that they've been able to achieve something from the protest. Mm -hmm. they, they've been able to reverse the, the tax uh, tariff and all yeah. that. They were able to achieve this. So, in our own case, since we want to fashion our own protest with that of uh, Kenya, what are we looking at? Let me, let me, let me, what's in there? You're saying we're fashioning it. So you think we're getting inspiration from Kenya? Because when Kenyans, when the youths, the Gen Zs that pushed for this protest, when they came out, we were, we were likening their protest to that of Ensa. So it felt like Nigerian youths in 2020 set a precedent, a precedent rather for protest, that kind of nationwide protest. Do you think that right now we are now is are we really going after Kenya? Or well, we're that, doing that what of, the that youth of want Kenya to do? is quite recent because if we are to trace the history of protest, you could remember the Arab Spring. Yeah, that's that's so you see Asia. so it's neither here. You can't really say uh, exactly so I, I think the whole world there's so much crisis and people are protesting. It's mm. one protest that will ginger the other, like they say <laughs> in our local palace. Mm. So it will ginger the other to say, okay, we can't sit back and watch this happen. Let's go out there and protest. But you see, why protesting? I would like uh, the protesters to be very careful uh, because uh, we saw what happened during the entrance. We saw how it was alleged that the government sponsored some talks yeah. to attack the, the protesters. 
and the, 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 the whole system, the whole process was hijacked. So I think people should be very careful. And the police have been making a lot of statements, threatening people, you can't come out and protest and all that. I don't think that is the right way to go. Mm. Normally, the standard is the police will come out exactly. and protect, and protect protesters. protesters. That's what we used to see. So if they don't do that, I think they are getting it wrong. Yeah. Because even the police, they, are, they exist in the same economy with us. They use the same market with us. So what are you what saying? Are, okay. are you saying that... Now, nah, Chino, so that mm. takes us to a very dicey and dangerous corner because we have two sets of persons now. We have the security agencies. We have the protesters. Mm. Both sides are hungry and angry. And both sides seem to not be in agreement with these protesters. So imagine what can happen. Mm. Imagine the, the, the protesters who are hungry and angry. Imagine the security agencies hungry and angry meeting at a particular point you you go forbid what will many, happen many many questions to ask right and before we take a breather the nsas protest did we make progress did was there the outcome was it the expected outcome was there even an expected outcome because i know we probably would have ended the sas but the major issue there was ending police brutality did we achieve that you see it was tag and sas sas mm. right and you were able to end sas that's a progress. Yeah. But there's no follow-up. Okay. Because police brutality, we still have police brutality going on. You see? So I think there should be follow-up. Follow-up in the sense that you, you try to still find out if people are being brutalized by police because you're able to end one particular unit. Mm. But the same officers who are in that unit, we are moved to other... Back, other yeah. So it's just like a vicious cycle. You move them from here to another side. These are the same persons. There were no seminars to reform them, to, to mm. read, have them think better and all that. So we were able to end SAS, yes, as a department in the police force. But what are the follow-up? Did it end police brutality? So that's, that's the issue. Follow-up. Who is doing the follow-up? The end SAS protesters came out and said they had no leader. So who is doing this follow-up? I know you have a lot. You have thoughts. But let's hold that thought and um, we'll come back to it right after the break. Let's take a little breather and we'll be back on X. This is still exclusive with me, Chino on Sochequet, and I'm still in conversation with Mr. Ejiro Onueta, a public affairs analyst. And we're still dissecting the planned protest for the nationwide planned protest for August 1st to 10th in Nigeria. So you had a thought before. Are you going to go back to that? Let me just go to my questions. All right. So um, you, you talked about the police warning civilians right now not to go on this protest and all of that but like like we established sorry like we established um in the past what we see is they'll tell you when you're going on a protest make sure that you have the police backing you should actually write to the police but <coughs> excuse me sorry about that we don't see that happening right now so let's say that this protest goes on how can this protest be protected assuming that protest will be a peaceful protest well uh the police should be there okay to protect uh, the protesters uh, we saw what happened during the NSAS. yeah we saw how government agents used talks to chase some of these uh, protesters and it wasn't really fun mm. it was gory because i witnessed some uh somewhere in abuja here mm. 
son was killed as a result of that particular incident and it doesn't really make sense. I hope this time we don't see some Alaye boys coming to attack protesters, you know. So I think the government should really ensure that everybody come out and protest peacefully. How can they do that? Yeah. Give orders to the police not to be brutal. Okay. To just protect these persons. Because they are coming out to protest peacefully, but we all know the situation we are in now. You know, the mm -hmm. harsh economic situation. Yeah. People are hungry and angry. And that means that some persons can actually take advantage of this protest to go after people's property. Exactly. You understand? So I think everybody should be vigilant and the, the protesters need to be educated, enlightened. Okay? They should be enlightened that if you see somebody trying to do something that is outside the world, this protest, you should be able to call the person to order or call the security agencies or because for me, I, I, I really, I don't know how they are going to manage this because some persons are just looking for this opportunity to attack, mm. to go after people's property, to vandalize, to loot people's shop and all that. Yeah. So I wonder, probably they might just have a particular area where they go, like in Abuja here, we have the, uh, what's it called now, the uh, fountain, that's uh, somewhere around Transcom. Yes, Where yes. people go and gather and mm. just do their thing. I think if they have a place like that, yeah, everybody will just go and stay and do their protest to be fine, rather than just going around the whole street and all that. You know, that could really cause something else. Mm. We've had reactions. Um, the Northern Governors Forum, I think, or some Northern Youth or so, I, I can't really, I don't have the facts right now, but them. Um, they have come out to say they, they support this protest. This morning, we also heard from the Afeni Ferry representative came and uh, he too wasn't really, he wasn't saying if he supports it or not, but he was as well stating, yes, there is bad governance. There's this. What do we think that reactions has been and how do you think it will affect this protest? And again, did it make any sense to put a date and say on the first we are coming out to protest? You see, a protest that will be successful, you don't need a date. Mm. It will just erupt, and others will follow. But whenever there's a date, just know that uh, I think it's political. It's planned. Job. Yes, it's planned. Somebody is trying to just put the government on their toes and something like that. But let me uh, say something here because the Ohanese came out to say they are not in support. Of course, they will not be in support. Because Why? if you check out, these are businessmen. A majority of persons from the yeah. east are businessmen. Yeah. And if anything go wrong, they'll suffer more. Yes. All right. And that's on one side. Now on the other side, because I, I happen to interact with a lot of persons, and what they've been saying is that during the answers, it was the northerners that refused to join the protest. Mm. And now they, they, they are calling all out, so we are going to protest. Why? Because they don't have another man as a president. So that's hypocritic to them. So this is having some geopolitical. Yes, it's having some to... tribal yes. what have you into mm. it. So some persons are saying we are not coming out. The other group are saying we are coming out. And these guys are saying, oh, during the end size, you say protest is haram. So what not change? What changed right now? That you want to protest now. So you see, Nigeria, if Nigeria must work, they must do away with religious sentiment and mm. tribalistic uh, sentiment and all that must do away with those things because hunger does not know who is a Christian, who is a Muslim, or who is Yoruba, who is Igbo. If you are hungry, you are hungry. Mm -hmm. yeah. You understand? So if Nigeria must work, we must put all hands on them to agree on something and achieve that thing. Because right now, some group are saying we will protest, other group are saying we are not protesting. And I can understand that. You understand? If Ohaneze is saying Igbos are not protesting, we can understand that. If at of recent, the, the uh, president just uh, signed the Southeast uh, Commission into law. Mm. So I don't think the Igbos want to yeah, enjoy because to. <laughs> to an extent he has been able to settle, to them. settle them. You understand? Mm. And now, that takes me to another aspect I would like us to even look at, uh, talk mm. about. The aspect of those who collected money during election yeah. to vote for APC. You have no right to, to go and protest. I'm serious. No matter how bad it is biting them. They've paid you up front. <laughs> yeah. 
You see, that's the dangers of collecting money to exactly. go and vote. They've paid the upfront. What do you expect the man to do? Is he a father Christmas? Did he expect to be bad? Oh, come on. <laughs> Anytime you compromise yourself, expect something, whatever you yes. see, you take. Yeah. Now, they should not expect anything. They should just go and sit at home and enjoy what they've they've, been, they've paid them up front. Mm. So that's what the they, they money, they, that's what they are seeing now. So they should enjoy it. So the, the, talking about the government, the government has been making plea to Nigerians not to come out. Some have pleaded, some are threatening, and they are saying we should still be patient. How more patient can we be? Really that be? is where the problem is. We were patient during Buhari's regime. Oh, they say it's just four years. We should be patient. We are in the second term. He's going to achieve a lot. That's how we became patient. And these days, the patient dog don't eat. Does he eat the fattest? No, now hunger will kill him. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? So, being patient, uh, I think the protest is in order because it will make the government to sit up. We saw how Rutu was able yeah. to sit up. So, I think Tinubu should sit up. Okay, at, uh, at this point, he should begin to look at how to cut down on governance. I know mm. some days ago, the National Assembly said they've uh, reduced their salary to 50%. It's not enough. How about their, their allowances? The allowances, because how much is their salary? How much is their salary? So, it's just like playing to the gallery. Mm. Tell us how much is your salary. Tell us how much are the allowances you get. Remove all the allowances. Yes, no more allowance. Because that's where the that's where the money that's is. That's where the it's money not is. In your salary. If you say okay, cut our salary fifty percent because we sympathize with you guys, don't pay us our allowance. Then we know you're serious. You're serious about we that. know that okay, these people are feeling our pain. Not when you you buy SUV cars. Uh, the other day the president said they need a private jet, mm. and then we just saw the the vice president, uh, his own resident. His own resident, yeah. This was the same thing that happened in Kenya that they protested. And everything just keeps going. Yes. Everything else is going. Let's so, fight the inflation. We have seen news now of um, interest rates at what keeps going high. Everything. Nothing is becoming easier for us. You see, you can't continue that way and expect people to be quiet. Mm. That's why I say the protest that will lead to revolution, you don't need a date. Yeah. It will just erupt and every other to person will follow. take a hungry, angry man. That is why the, the politicians should be very careful because these people know their address. Can't live in isolation. They know where you live. Okay. Mm. We don't pray it gets to that. So this is the right time for them to do the needful. You know, some persons have been there for more than 12, 15, 20 years or thereabout. Mm. What are you doing for your people? It's not enough to, for your people to see your kids with flashy cars and yeah. they're hungry. And um, yeah. All right. Thank you so much. But in a minute, assuming that this protest goes on, what word? Have all the protesters this time. Ah, uh, well, the, the thing is this if you are going out to protest, be wise. Okay, mm -hmm. our wisdom is profitable to direct. You should be vigilant, okay, so that you don't get caught unaware. Because if you go out there and you see people looting people's shop and you join them and you get shot, you lose your life for nothing. Mm -hmm. So, I think you should be very careful. And whenever you see something that is not in line with what your belief, what you stand for, I think you should just back off. Yeah. Yes. What doesn't align with you, you should back off. So it means that we should move or we should move into this protest with an agenda, with your own principles and with your ideology. Of Don't course. just blindly go on protesting. Thank you so much, Adrian. That this has Thank been you. a great time with you. All right, so that has been what we can take on this episode of Exclusive. Tinubu must go and bad governance. Is that enough for us to hit the streets? And um, of course, we know that this is going to ruffle the country a bit for 10 whole days. So we thank God it's not a strike. So we'll still have power and still have businesses running. All right. Thank you so much for sticking with me till the very end of Exclusive. My name is Chin on Sochakwa Until I come your way again, be good, be safe, and have a good day.